Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the God. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. That's right. Uh. Michael Coyer. Did I say your last name right? Absolutely Michael right, brother. Coyier. Thank you. Welcome, brother. You brought a rooster with you? No, it's chicken. Oh, chicken. <laughs> you don't know about that? <laughs> oh, chicken. Wake up in the morning. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> This is my therapy chicken. They don't let me on the plane without that. Oh, you know what? I, I got a I got emotional fries. What? Yeah, my 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 my, my home my homegirl Rachel Edwards. You know she's the showrunner on my late night talk show, and she gave me these emotional fries. I, if you're being serious about the therapy chicken, I have these emotional and they fries. French fries. Yeah, they like they, it's like they stuffed French fries, <laughs> and whenever whatever mood I'm in, I just pick that fry and I hold on to it. What fry do you have today? I didn't use it today, oh. but it's when I'm in the mood. You feel the mood today. Nah, nah, nah. Today, I'm good nah. today. I'm good today. No. Is that really a therapy today chicken? Has, n- absolutely not. Oh, <laughs> my God. See what I'm saying? <laughs> it's, it's, just, it's just so much fun. You know, this thing here really, uh, it really balances out a room. Word, you know, word, people word. who ain't laughing, they laugh when they see a fly-ass brother with... A cock. <gasps> with a cock. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've choked this chicken, but that's that's another story. Now, now, Mike, now Michael got a new podcast Bro, called. Before we do that, you got to okay. wish the brother happy birthday. about to be 66 this week. Man, whoa, happy whoa, whoa. day, King. 66. I feel a day over 59. Hey. Thank you very much. And that thank silver you. looked good, my brother. Oh, thank you, that King. Silver I looked good. that down. It was real full, brother. You know, I just did uh, the Miss Pat show for the next Christmas, for the Christmas coming Salute up. Salute to Miss Pat. Okay, shout out to Miss Pat. so I... I had the beard all the way out. It you was like Santa Claus. Yeah, I, I'm Santa Claus. Debbie Allen directed it. Mm-hmm. It was off the chain. Go. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you chicken like that. You just la- <laughs> you just launched the podcast called Michael Talks to Everybody. 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 And I'm talking to everybody on there, man. You know, my first, my and first of all, it's iHeart. So I didn't just launch. I want you to know I'm part of the iHeart family. That's a family. Right? That's a, and, and let me shout out my producers right off the top, Ramsey Yant and Tamika Campbell, because those two really helped me form the show and get mm-hmm. the show you know, together. I mean, I have the creative part of it, but they know all that technical stuff. I mean, technically, I'm retarded. I can't do... You said technically you're retarded. I'm retarded. I can't do no computer <laughs> stuff. I'm thinking about renting a teenager uh, <laughs> to show teenager. me some of this, you know, because I don't have a clue. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't make, ignore the chicken. It don't have nothing to do with it. Chicken don't have nothing to do with it. You know. So yes. Yeah, so Michael talks to everybody. It's just that I get to talk to everybody. My first, my first guest was T. S. Madison. Y'all know her. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love T. S. T. S. is cool. She came on the show. I, I mean, do you know why they put T. S. on the front of their name? Why? Because she's trans. Uh, trans Selton. Oh. She's transgender, but why is it there? Why is it? Why is it in her n- name? Oh, I thought she was just using it as an identifier. Yeah, like she wanted people it, to know. Yes, cause see, that's exactly why she said she don't want to show up somewhere with somebody and the, the dingling pop out. And, oh, I thought you was a no. Off <laughs> top, they let you know you're talking to transsexual by connecting it to their name. So, I, never, I never knew that, but that's not a yeah, good never, reason. <laughs> that, that could just be your initial. No, I'm no, not. <laughs> you'll probably ask. No, you, you oh, know? yeah, well, yeah. I'll be like, what does TS mean? Maybe yeah, if you're yeah. out trying to date some woman and she just say, my name is R.J. Reynolds, you gonna be like, what girl was R.J. See, uh, Robert, you know, and that, that, that. I ain't never see, thought of that. That's yeah. difficult, but see, because coming from New York, T.S. was Terror, man, Terror Squad. Because what? what Terror Squad? That's Fat Joe's crew. It's Terror Squad. Everything don't revolve oh, around New Joe's York. Crew. You right? You Whoa. right? I'll give you an example. I never asked T.K. what T.K. mean, but T.K. I ain't never Kirkland? slept with T.K. either though. Yeah, so TK. I- yeah, but a TK <laughs> was a, a woman, and you met him at the bar, and she said, "Hi, I'm TK. I'm TK Kirkland." You saying you wouldn't say what's TK for? I think you'd ask. I never you might not ask a brother right standing there because that sounds like initials. Mm-hmm. It sounds like just regular, but the TS. I, I know I didn't know, and I need to know it because she never introduced herself as Madison. She right. always she always says TS, TS Madison. Madison. I'm like, yo, what? Why is I don't know anybody else that does. They use the TS though. Do you know any other trans person that uses no. TS? Yeah, they do. Really? Yeah, I mean, I don't. I'm not saying a lot, no, like transsexuals. I hope you're not trying to say I know a lot of. I'm playing with y'all. Come on, wake up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't care if you do or not. <laughs> I ain't <laughs> no, but I'm just saying. No, Michael talks to everybody. I talk to, that's what everybody. she said. Well, it was so cool because she said, "Look, I don't have no thin skin. You can talk to me about anything." Mm-hmm. So I said, "Okay, riddle me this: um, If you're a transsexual, why you still got the dick?" And she said, "Well, you know." Uh, Michael, because uh, I'm, I believe in God. My my mom is very religious as well. She's always with me. And um, so, is this a FCC show? Or can I? No, we'll we'll going. Okay. So she said, "Well, you know, well, Michael, um, I didn't. I felt like my body parts came from God, and if mm-hmm. I alter them, 
I'll be messing with God. Mm. That's part one. And then part two, she said, plus, I like to get my dick sucked, my Kai. Don't you like to get your dick sucked, my Kai? And I was thinking, yeah, but not not right now. Uh, but yeah, that, that was, um, <laughs> and, but she was so bold like that. She's so forward and so cool don't care. and yeah, funny. Yeah. She got a, oh man, she ain't scared. And that's she what she scared. ended. She said, that's why I love being on this show called Mike. Mike can talk to everybody. And, and we are, I mean, T.S. Madison and Tabitha Brown came on. Love Tabitha uh, too. Don't I know her personally, Tabitha. but I love Tabitha. She's sharp and, mm -hmm. and she's really got a good heart. I brought her on with Tressa Smallwood, who produced so far about 19 films, Cold Cold Sister. And I had them do, uh, the topic was, how do I win? Mm -hmm. You know, we did a topic on nigga. You know, because a lot of folks don't understand where the word comes from. The mm -hmm. origin of the word is from Egypt and Africa. Mm -hmm. And it means king. And it means God. And it means goddess. So white folks literally took the greatest word we had and used it to give us something to always fight about. You know, mm -hmm. oh, man, my, my grandmama died. Uh, for for that word and civil rights. No, she didn't. She died because white folks hated us. They hated your ass. You could have said peanut butter. It's going to fuck you up. It was over. <laughs> Forget about that. They had nothing to do with the words. You know, but when we did, we did two particles. When we did, it was just me and some of my partners. I have sidekicks that do it with me, uh, Cletus Cassidy. And and uh, and when we're doing the, the part, I was like, but this ain't, we need somebody who's going to give us some real energy on it. So we went back and got Roland Martin. Mm -hmm. So Roland Martin don't allow nigga. In the studio, you can't say you can't say nigga in the studio. You can say suck my dick and motherfucker, but if you say so, what's Roland Martin say about that? That's the first time he, I heard. No, he didn't. He talked about it on this show. He don't. He don't use that word. He don't, no, no, no. I'm talking about the the the, the nigga word meaning king and goddess. Oh, no, and no, Y'all don't. People don't even recognize that. No, I they don't that. realize mm -hmm. that you knew that. Yeah, Kendrick Lamar got a whole skit about it on his album. I knew yeah. that before then. But All right. Yeah. And I have a shirt that says nigga, N-I-G-G-A, naturally invoking God's greatest attributes. Mm -hmm. Because what happened is you have to always turn things around. If people bring it to you, it doesn't work. You got to figure out how to shine that up and use it for you so it mm -hmm. benefits you. You know, but otherwise you're always feeling, you know, like something is holding you down because you let things be over you. Nothing's mm -hmm. over you but God. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. so it's just, I mean, the people that have been on the show, Earthquake. Earth oh my God. I'm hilarious. I'm, I'm, I'm happy for Earthquake, right? Like he's having this time. He's coming in his, to his time now. He's been around a long time mm -hmm. kicking it, you know? And so now it's really coming. He was really brilliant. T.I. came on. Mm -hmm. Tip. Yeah. Yeah, we talk, that, that's one of my favorite dudes, man. I love Tip. Tip, uh, you know, we talked about him getting booed off stage. Yeah. And his boo wasn't a monumental boo. No. J.B. Smooth was a monumental boo. They booed his ass so loud in Atlanta. I could hear his shit when we was flying over in the plane. Boo, nigga, boo, 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 motherfucker. Really? Oh, yeah. Boo, shit this? this was about maybe one year ago. Really? Oh, my God. It was everywhere. If you just pull up JB Smooth gets booed, it was all over the internet. I, never heard I mean, that. booed him all the way. I feel like we asked him. I feel like we talked about that when he was here. I remember that. Yeah, because yeah. I think he was on the thing with Martin Lawrence. Yeah. It was like the tour of Martin Lawrence. Mm -hmm. He was one of them. And I just think it it, it just didn't work. It wasn't his out. crowd. It, it, it wasn't his crowd. And, and also, you have to work your crowd. He's been around long enough to know that. So if it's not your crowd, then you have to adjust to the crowd. Because they the ones paid, you know, and so the customers gotta be gotta be right. So you can't be doing material that the crowd don't like, and then say, "Hey, see, that's why I mess with y'all, cause y'all don't get it, or y'all ain't this." Oh, that's that. what he said. Well, I, I can't quote him because it's been a while, but he came back at him, you know. Like I said, I don't come to Atlanta, but I, yeah, I don't be on his little quoting because he gonna watch this show and say, "I never said that." I don't know exactly what he said, <laughs> but I, you know, that's why I'm paraphrasing. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm paraphrasing. But what he did say, they run him out, and there's it's no filing that. I mean, sometimes you have to lose to get it. You know what I'm saying? I throw people off shows all the time. You know, mm -hmm. if I'm in town and they put somebody on the show and they're not funny, they don't do the rest of the weekend with me. They got to go. So, you know, I have a morning show too. It don't compete with y'all because mm -hmm. I'm on YouTube and I do it five days a week, the Michael mm -hmm. Kaya morning show on YouTube. And we have a comedian every morning. I've already put on 486 comedians. Oh, wow. So we do a Monday through Friday. This Friday, we just was our 556 show. But that's the only reason I think I was able to get over on iHeart because people could see me, yeah. you know? So I was doing this for almost two years for free. Mm -hmm. And I got everybody. We have a comedian every show. We have uh, always a spoken word or a poem. We always either have a, a vocalist who's doing rap or hip hop and we pray every show. Cause I think your day always ends the way it begins. You know, if you start your day and you positive, like I talk to God first thing in the morning, man. Well, first thing I do is I brush my teeth because I like to talk to God with a dirty mouth. That's right. But after that, I get in the mirror and thank you, man. Look what you did. Mm -hmm. You took your time with me today. I'm a, man, right. I'm going to show off for you, Father God. Mm -hmm. If you walk out with an attitude of positivity, an attitude of gratitude, your whole day going to be good. 
Absolutely. When you get up and kick your foot on some shit, the whole day gonna be fucked up. God yeah. damn but it! Got, but you gotta Who shift this chair. You that's know? right. You gotta shift your mindset immediately. Mm -hmm. you, you said something. Mm -hmm. I like the conversation about God. Mm -hmm. Why not get those comedians grace? Because you know we all know one bad show don't mean that you might have a bad weekend. So if one person uh, has one they, bad show, you kick them off. Yeah, yeah. I want them to go away and get it right and, and come back. Because that's the thing on the morning show. We brought people back who died. They died like a dog. But on our show, we warn you. You got three minutes. Or right, And it's got to be clean. And it's got to be funny. Mm. So three minutes you, on what your comedy show or in the morning I'm show? On morning show each morning. But yeah. most, you know, most comedians say that's the worst thing to do when somebody says be funny right now. They say that's but very we ain't difficult. Tell them right now. We told they asked for they got there. We say nigga, this what you doing? Nigga, this yeah, what you doing? You, ready. You're doing three yeah, yeah, minutes. Yeah, yeah. You gotta be funny. It's gotta be clean. And we let them know up front if it's not if it's not funny, nigga. It's gonna be a long motherfucking walk back to your car. We are gonna talk about your ass for ten minutes. We will dog your ass. My sidekick, Cletus. You Cassidy, stop him in the middle. Oh, I've stopped people and shut them down. I said, oh, you can stop. That's good. Thank you. I appreciate Damn that. Damn it, man. But you can go ahead now. That's, that's, you ain't no, we Any, ain't no more. Anybody shit. cry? No, nah, no, nah, but everybody come back. I always let them come back. I give them up to 30 days, and you come back. Give it another shot. Everybody's had, like you said, a yeah. bad show. Yeah. You know, but like when I'm doing the road, if they on that show, mm -mm, they got to go. If they not funny the first show, mm -mm, got to get out of there. Mm -hmm. I, I want comics to be on the show with me that's funnier than me. I don't, I don't, you know, a lot of artists, they make sure the comics aren't as funny as them. So they are saying, I don't give a fuck about that. I can follow anybody. Ain't no comic on this planet that I can't follow. So I want comics in front of me because that's going to make my job harder, or more better, more intricate. I got to really do my shit if you kick ass. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? If you come in, you so-so, who wants a show of so-so? That's right. right. How long can you sit for two hours and hit nigga after nigga who ain't saying shit? You know, that's that's fucked up. Uh, so, wait, we had Earthquake. Yolanda Adams came on. We did. I like that you came in here prepared. That's Go right. He, he, know, he got his talking points. <laughs> Go ahead. Do your thing, Mike. Because well, we did one called, is we did one segment called, um, we did one show called, is is uh, is church still relevant? You know? But I did it with three of my heathen friends. And it was funny and everything. <laughs> but we said, we got to go back and get some, some church people. So we went and got Yolanda Adams mm -hmm. and Vance Olds. You know Bishop Vance Olds? He be roller skating him and his wife all mm -hmm. over. You see him on the internet. Yeah, go, yeah. Cold, cold Bishop. So they, they had their points of view. You know? I mean, the whole thing is about having rousing conversations. What was the, what was the, uh, what did you walk away from that conversation with? Because I like that qu question. Because I, I be thinking the church what What the relevancy as it breaks to down be. to who, it, it depends on who the person is. Mm -hmm. Because some people, first of all, define church differently. So, so a church might not be relevant to you because you may think of it as, as a structure. If you think of it as having to be a building someplace where everyone gathers, you know, then that's a whole different thing than if you know the church is in your heart. Mm -hmm. So because uh, people have different religions, and some religions don't have a thing called a church. It may be called a mosque or a temple or something else, but it's still the holy space where we gather. But anytime two of us gather, you got church. But is it relevant? Well, less and less people are believing in in God, Le Ugh. less and less people, are, I mean, I'm sorry, more and more people. Oh, okay, yeah. More and more people are believing less in God. More and more people are backing away from God because I think part of it is we have a lot of practitioners that are assholes. Mm -hmm. uh, really, they don't, they, they're manipulating a thing mm -hmm. instead of trying to decipher a thing. You know, like my church in, in uh, when I go to a physical church is Agape. In, in Los Angeles, Michael Beckwith, mm -hmm. cold, cold brother. But he's he's a teller of truth. That's why I like him. The church is not denominational. It's not denominational. Everybody come to my church. It'd be Catholics. It'd be uh, uh, Muslims, Buddhists. Everybody come. People who don't go to church come mm -hmm. dragging in there. Crackheads come in. Hi. We accept everybody at our church because at the end of the day, the church is for the people who really want it. Mm -hmm. You know, not for the people that need it. The church is for the people that need it wouldn't be no room in the church. The church mm -hmm. be so full, you people do church out in the street. Mm -hmm. But it's for the people who also want it because I think God meets you halfway. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that God is like, God is like a buffet. You know what I'm saying? Where it's always, there. if it's something that you can use, you use if, if you don't have anything, that's all right. All right, all right the all buffet right. is always there, but you have to call on them mm -hmm. for them to use you. You have to connect with your higher source. Just like, you know, me being an addict, doing a, being a crackhead and shit, uh, in, in programs, whether it's A A N A C A, even triple A, they all say you got to connect with God, mm -hmm. a God of your choosing too. They don't tell you who to call God. Gain, Allah. gain your own definition. Yeah, your mm -hmm. own definition. But we have to understand that something greater than us created us from nothingness and did it in the name of love. I see people you know? moving farther away from the church, but more into God. Like people say, mm, I'm spiritual, not yes. religious. You know what I mean? Like yes. I love 
I can I can listen to you know the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Yes. You know, but then I love listening to Bishop T D Jakes. I love listening mm. to Sarah Jakes Roberts, Torrey Roberts. I listen yes. to that every Sunday, but I'm not a church person, you know. Right. I just like the spirit. I just like the word. I like a good word. Me too. I think I'm more spiritual than religious. I mm -hmm. think someone defined religion as people who religious people are people who believe in hell, and spiritual people are folks who already been there. Oof, you know, so real. so I mean, I that's I would just say that I'm spiritual, but I, I what I really would say I am is I'm a man of God. Right. Or I stand for God. Or right. there's no question of that for me. I would die for God. Now you said 13 years of sobriety. Uh, it'll be 12 years. Uh, March 1st. 12 years. March 12 years. Congratulations, man. Oh, man. man. Oh, but I miss it. But do, uh, do you? <laughs> no, oh, I okay. don't. I don't. I do not. I do not. I, the first couple of years I did, you mm -hmm. know, because I dug it. I really loved crack. It was so good. It was so much fun, you know. But I wasted so much money and so much time and fucked up so many relationships and opportunities. Nobody talks about that. Nobody talks about the fact that it is a good high, right? It's just not good for you. No, it's terrible for you. But it's fabulous. But no one talks about alcohol. <laughs> and people get ruined where, 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 throughout where, where, their where? lives because they just drink and drink and drink and get so drunk. Like my father was a professional alcoholic. He would drink a fifth of booze a day and drink and smoke God, three damn. packs of pale mail. Wow. You remember pale mail, Paul Mall? Yeah. 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 The green pack. Yeah, oh, and the red pack. And the red pack. And the, and the, and the plain white pack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the shit was like smoking wood, you mm -hmm. know? And his heart exploded at like 91. Cause I, I mean, at, at him at 51, his heart exploded because it just it couldn't take the pressure anymore. But he was the greatest person, man, greatest man I ever knew was my dad. He was just the shit. And he died when I was 12. By the end, he had already taught us how to do everything. I know how to cook and clean and, and iron clothes and all the stuff I need to survive. And I think that's what we're supposed to do as parents. We're supposed to not be raising children. We're supposed to be raising young adults. We're mm. supposed to be teaching people mm -hmm. to be prepared if some shit happens. If I go get in the car and I'm gone. You shouldn't have to now scramble. You should still know how to do the basic stuff to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. I want to give a shout out to TD Jakes too because my life is evolving in a way like I can't believe. I'm sitting smack dab in the middle of my dream, brother. Everything I've ever wanted to do, I'm doing right now. That's what it you is. You know, the morning show, I'm doing the podcast, I'm doing Miss Pat's show. I have two films on Tubi. I got five more in the can that's coming. I have to wait. Look at this. This is the cover of my new. <laughs> erotic poetry book. MC okay. Butternuts. Yeah, it's called In the Wet Spot, Blue Erotica by MC Butternut. I hate being in the wet spot. Uh, oh, yeah. So you, you like being in the wet spot? No, no, you see they're not actually Nobody in, like it. Being in the oh, wet yeah, spot. Oh, yeah, funny Oh, that's is, dope. The wet spot is a heart. Oh, yeah, and what's yeah. so funny is initially when he painted the picture, he had them in the wet spot, and that's mm. it, nigga. Anybody's fucking know the first thing you do is get out the West Spot. Yeah, Matter of fact, fact y'all argue over who gets the West Spot. You'll turn the West Spot. Right. Right. You'll turn, you know. oh, somebody go get a towel and put it over the Get that towel. Get that towel. You know, so so they had a West Spot and it wasn't a heart before it was a spot. So we had to form like a heart. Plus, she had her hand on his chest. I said, no, you gotta put that, you gotta slide that under the covers, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But I'm doing this as an audio book first. <laughs> it's erotic, it's flies for us. So what are you talking? So you are you talking about certain scenes? Are you breaking it down? I'm doing poetry. I'm doing erotic poetry. Can we hear something? I'm talking about fucking well, you know what a matter of fact you can all right matter of fact you can my woman first of all let me say this sonia my woman's name is sonia wardell okay i just got engaged congratulations December 27 we this just met this is your first, first week in thing. august wow is this your first marriage no this will be my third one third okay i'm gonna do this shit till i get it right all right anyway no i'm not this is it this, in fact <laughs> wait, i tell you what wait and don't let me forget we're going to go to this point but uh i wasn't about to get no more relationships i have been in long-term relationships since 78. Mm. I haven't been single since 1978. So I was in three long relationships. My first marriage, high school sweetheart, married to her 12 years, but we was only together six months. I don't think that worked out. Okay. Then the next one, I was with her 28 years, but married for 24. And and uh, when thing is over, thing is over. And then my last- But well, why didn't that one work? Because y'all were together so long. 28 years is I a long in, time. I think in the case of all three of them, it was the same thing. We, I found that it, it didn't work for us. Mm. Sometimes you come in, and the heat is enough. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And and in saying this, I don't want to disparage right. my exes. I ain't that nigga. Mm -hmm. You know, I won't, I won't be with somebody long term and then go talk bad about them. I think bitches and assholes do that. You know, right. you don't do that. I mean, if they, if they ain't shit, why you been with them nine Correct. years? Now they not shit on year 10? That's right. That's Fuck right. out of here with that bullshit. So, so I, I won't do that, but I think part of me feels like I settled but I feel like they probably settled too when it mm -hmm. came to me. So I'm not saying that I'm better than them, but I'm saying in the Hebrew faith, 
they have a book called Talmud, and Talmud is like their Bible. It's like their, their list of rules and laws, their spiritual laws, right? So in Talmud, it said God created everybody's perfect halves. When you first find your perfect half, that's your Bashir Torah. If it's a man, you're Bashir. Now you become whole. Mm -hmm. Your heart sings a royal song. You never have to uh, fall in love or look again. And people say, well, if that shit is true, how can 50% of people get divorced? Because mm -hmm. they didn't find the Bashir Torah. Mm -hmm. They settle. Oh, the ass look good. Look at them titties. I wonder if she swallows. <laughs> you know, okay. Then you say, okay, well, good. She do some of the things I really need. I'm good with that. I, I, I put off these other things I also really, really did. Mm -hmm. But then six, seven, eight years later, it comes knocking on the door. That thing that you really know you still love and want to have part of, that you put on the side and you settle. So as you go, so you start letting it down and, and mm -hmm. your guards start coming down. Then you get the peeking, the sneaking. Maybe I can get this over there still and still be able to come to the house. So the mechanisms of your mind throws you if you're not really with the one. Gotcha. You know, and I was never really with the one, but each time I thought it, each time, you, you know, because that's how it is when you first get the guy. Oh, man, mm -hmm. everything's popping, everything hot. She like what I like. You, you think it's that and you think it's that. And I, I thought that each time. It's so funny because I told my queen, uh, I, told, I told my baby, Sonia, she said, baby, I've been studying you. You know, since I met you, I went back and watched all your stuff. Some of the things you say unto me, you've said about other women. Mm. And I say, yeah, and that shit is true. It was true about them. Now it's true about you. <laughs> you know, because it was, then it was true about them then, right. because that's how it really was. Like this woman, no one's ever made me feel like this in my life. Okay. And I would like, but how I said, do you know that that's not more heat as opposed to something that's going to be sustaining? Because I've never felt this in my life. You know, in, in 65 years, you know, I've been with these three women. And each one of these women I was with, I love them. I love them deeply, but not like no shit like this. This woman, I know how I love her because I no longer objectify women. Mm. And I've always objectified women. Look at that ass. Look at them. I wonder what she going to do. You know, can I get with that? <laughs> now, I don't give a fuck how fine you are. I, I don't care. And I love Beyonce. Beyonce is one of my favorites, but she could be butt naked with two hands full of $100 bills. All I can think about is Sonya. That's all I can fucking think about. I think about it every day and all day long. And I met her. I took my play to the National Black Theater Festival. And I have to say, it's a crying shame that black people don't even know about it. Mm -hmm. The National Black Theater Festival, I'm on stages six times a week every weekend with two to 300 people. And I asked every show, I love how theater. many people know about the National Black Theater Festival? Yeah. Two hands, mm -hmm. one hand. I went down to, the meet, to uh, do my play. I met her. She owns the number one soul food restaurant in Winston-Salem called Simply Sonia. She owns a second restaurant called Simply Soul, and she just acquired the building for the third one. I said another thing that's pretty exciting about her. This first woman I've ever been with got all her own shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she got all her own shit. She got her own money, her own homes, her own cars, you know, which is now ours. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? But she is just... I mean, I haven't seen no shit like that. I can see you getting worked life. up. Choke yeah, chicken, man. Oh, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, you got to do your writing poem. You got to do your writing. Don't forget about oh, your writing poetry. Oh, oh, wait, that's why I mentioned her because when I met her, I could do these poems to her. And she know I know what the fuck I'm talking about. Because mm -hmm. she you know she'd been in it with me. I just got to see two things about her that really made, 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 me, made her blow my mind. She came. It blows my mind. She came to my home to do the Christmas party. I do the Christmas party every year. It's 28th year. So she's coming to do the party with me. She's trying to clean shit up. I'm like, no, baby, let me just call some people in and clean, baby. I got a broom. Why we need? Why we need to bring people in, right? So she's in the back, cleaning off the back porch. My partner come in. He said, man, you got a real one out there. I said, what you mean? He said, man, she's out there sweeping, and she came across a rat, and she said it must have been dead about a year. She said that sucker will swell up, look like a small puppy. He said she didn't screech, she didn't ask for help, she didn't call your ass. She swept that damn rat up and kept that shit moving. I said. Oh, shit. Mm. How old is she? She's 53. Okay, okay. She's 53. And, and but she old enough to recognize the signs of a stroke? She, oh, man. She yeah, knows yeah. all the shit. And the, the night after the party, after the Christmas party, I thought we had an intruder. Mm -hmm. So I'm going up to the second floor of my home. And you know how these panels that want to open and you can go up and, and put insulation and shit mm -hmm. in, right? So we go upstairs. I go up. She goes up first. I look up. That damn thing is open. The door's open. I've been living there three motherfucking years. That shit ain't never been open. The door was open, right? <laughs> so I'm like, oh shit, right? So the way it's up there, I'm thinking maybe the wind blew it. Blew it's like there. styrofoam. So I take a stick and poke it. That shit slam shut. Pow! I said, okay, no, that wasn't the wind. Okay, so I go in the room. I'm moving kind of fast. She's like, what up, baby? I said, I'm getting these guns. We need to call 911. I think we got somebody in the house. So I said, do you know how to handle a gun? She said, no, but give it to me. That's when I said, oh, this motherfucker is shit. So 
I will always remember as long as I live, her in my hallway holding a gun and then she locked her elbow. And dude, I they will be in my mind for a hundred years, man. She was holding her gun. She had the nine millimeter. I had the thirty eight. We called nine one one. Thank God they went up in there. Wasn't nothing in there. What was up there? Well, yeah, nothing. What? It was the wind. Oh, oh the God, wind God. was so powerful that it shifted it. But I had been there three years, and that shit had never happened. But I think that God did that to let me know who she is. Mm -hmm. That no matter what go down, she ready. You know, even if she don't know how to do it, she said no. I don't know how to give it to me. You know what I'm saying? So she, she is the one. Okay, wait, wait. Let me hit one of the points for her. So when I read these poems to her, because oh, I done made this kind of love to her. She knows <laughs> what the fuck I'm talking about. Okay. She see butter nuts. Let's, Let's go. MC, MC butter nuts. nuts in the house. Woo woo woo. And uh, the the book is called In the Wet Spot: Blue Erotica by MC Butter Nuts. And here's the purpose of this book. The purpose of this book is for people to come together, mm -hmm. just a couple. You know. You're butt naked, not butt naked. See, butt naked is the destination. It's about the journey. <laughs> Correct. You want to be in a sexy foreplay lingerie. The journey. Yeah, the foreplay, the lingerie. Gotcha. You know, to bring the lights down, put a fire on the fireplace, roll one of them fancy cigarettes without the writing on it, get you something nice to drink, you know, mm -hmm. and snuggle up with each other. I'm talking about the snuggle where you, 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 it's a little cool outside, but you crack the window a little bit. Gotcha, so the gotcha, gotcha. Come gotcha. In, but then you bundle up with the covers and shit, right? And then you read, take, these, take turns reading these poems to each other. I, I, you know, I'll do the one called, I got to go to work. Uh, let me say, got to go. Yeah, I gotta go to work. Hold up, I need my eyeballs. You know, I can't see shit with my glasses. You about to be sixty six? We get it. I got glass in every room in my house. Yeah. Kitchen, <laughs> toilet, airplane. <laughs> got some on top of refrigerator. Okay. Um, I got to go to work. What's that thing you sucking on? Kind of looks like candy <laughs> corn. Kind of long, kind of thick. Wait a minute. That's my dick. The way you hold it in your mouth makes me think you're from the south, somewhere north of Mississippi. Way. The way you hold that thing is trippy. Plenty of lip and not much teeth. I guess you know now where's the beef. Hold it gently as you lick it. Suck it good before you stick it. Don't worry so much about the head. Be gentle with them nuts instead. Massage them slow. Keep the head wet. And mucho pumping you shall get. I will show you my appreciation as I slide into your situation. With gentle thrust, your joy will pop. And I won't quit. Until you moan, stop. I've come six times, can't come no more. Now pick your shit up from the floor. I got to go to work today. I can't just lay here trying to play. I need my job. Shit, things are tight. Besides, you hit that thing all night. That dick's so good, it should be a crime. Oh, fuck it, daddy. Give it to me one more time. Then I got to go to work. MC Butternuts. <laughs> you got MC Butternuts. Michael Coyer. Now tell them where they can see your, uh, check out your podcast. <laughs> okay, y'all got to come to iHeart. In any place you get your podcast, you can go oh, to iHeart, put in Michael Talks to everybody. So far, I had Yolanda Adams, Charles, Charleston White, Kenan Thompson. You know, Kenan Thompson is the longest member in the history yeah. of Saturday Night Live. Absolutely. Ain't nobody even close. T.I. ripped it. I have to say the smartest guy I've talked to so far is Hill Harper. Mm -hmm. oh, I absolutely. don't even know how he get that big ass brain, absolutely. that little bit of head. Uh, All uh, the graduates. George Wallace, mm -hmm. and then top of the class too. That's yeah. right. He did just graduate, he, he did the shit. So yeah, you can always go to iHeart and get it. Um, uh, I think that's pretty much all of it. Make sure you see my morning show, too. But also go to my podcast. Uh, let me see. I just want to look real quick. Mike talks to everybody. Ray J just told me today he's coming on. Okay. okay. So next okay. week he'll be doing it. Will you come and do my podcast? Absolutely. <laughs> Boom. There you go. Daddy, this has been I'm a hell of a day for I'm me. There. Okay. And so I got Miss Pat show, morning show, in the wet spot. You got that little. What's the name of the YouTube channel? Huh? What's the name of the YouTube? My YouTube is just Michael Cowyer's Morning Show. And you know, one of the poems in there is about is the misappropriation of a dingling. I mean, the misbehavior of a dingling. This is one of the poems. <laughs> you see, the dingling got a black eye. Mm -hmm. He got a black eye. Man, you so this, crazy. The, no, the guy was having a conversation <laughs> with, his, with his penis. Well, he wasn't, but the penis, it's, it's the boy's girlfriend laughed at him when he took his clothes off because his penis was so small. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he said, shut up, bitch. But it wasn't him. It was his dick. Damn. So he was shocked. First, he was shocked that his dick was talk. Secondly, he was shocked that he kept it to himself all this time. And third, he was shocked that when he finally talked, he gonna insult his woman. So he slapped the shit out of him and him and the dick yelled ouch at the same time. Ow! You know, that hurt me more than it's gonna hurt you. And so it goes at the, whole, at the end, <laughs> at the end, <laughs> she says to him, don't slap him anymore. He's the reason I'm with you. Mm. And then they all bust up laughing. They live happily ever after. And the dick 
hasn't said a word since. Oh, Michael Coyle. Yeah, MC Michael Buttonuts Michael is my favorite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to buy MC Buttonuts right y'all. now. Please make sure y'all go and, and tune in. <laughs> go to iHeart. Michael talks to everybody. I want to talk to you. And I, oh, here's the last thing. Let me tell you the list of people I want. I haven't gotten yet. Okay. I really want Angela Bassett on this show. Uh, Trevor Noah has done the coldest piece on um, – on, on reparations that mm-hmm. anyone has ever said. You pull that up, it's gonna blow your mind. The most clear piece, Denzel Washington, I just saw Samuel Jackson on Broadway uh, with his son, Denzel's son is in there, he stole the show. Yeah, uh, Pierre, uh, yeah he stole the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, John David, that's John David, Samuel Jackson, cool. Stevie Wonder, I don't think anybody ever really does an a, a interview with Stevie mm-hmm. Wonder. And you know how brilliant, how much stuff he has. Man. We uh, met him one time. Yeah. You met, he's, he met came with Hillary time. Clinton. Oh, what? Yeah, he came up here and performed uh, Happy, happy Birthday happy Hillary. Birthday with Hillary Clinton. Yep. That's awesome. Yeah. Shaka Khan is something. Love Shaka. Mm-hmm. Shaka Khan is something very special. And I actually, I want to interview Steve Harvey. Mm. I want to interview Steve Harvey because it's show business. And he's pretty good with his show, but he a motherfucker with his business. Oh, yeah, that's so right. He, Love that him. dude, know, he know the art of the game, brother, Absolutely. and how to make it here. You know, the name of the game is survival. The name of the game is longevity. Like, I'm I'm a legend, but it ain't because I accomplished no shit. It's just how to outlive all these motherfuckers. <laughs> Stupid. <man. laughs> he who lives the longest wins, sir. That's the way it goes. I am so honored. Tell him who to follow you, man. Time. Hey, y'all can follow me everywhere. Uh, on Instagram, it's just my name, Michael underscore Collier, C-O-L-Y-A-R. For the for the uh, show, it's YouTube, the Michael Collier Morning Show. For the podcast, which is off the chain, I do three a week every week for 50 weeks at a time. I do that for three years. So for the podcast, you just go to iHeart. Put That's in it. Michael Talks there that air. Body. Tell your mama Pookie and Run Run to come on down and check us out. God is great. God, God is, that's the great. thing I need it's you Michael to know. God Carrier. is great. Thank y'all. It's the Breakfast Club. <laughs> <laughs>